welcome fine people of the internet. It is the day Armour 3 Apex is nearly upon us with its greatest update that we have seen so far. Let's take a little look at what we can expect and get into some nitty gritty details of exactly what's going to be involved. And it's a huge update guys. So let's get right into it. 13 new weapons and 10 new vehicles being introduced into the Apex update. We have a release date, which is going to be confirmed at PC Gaming Show on a Monday, June 13th. Uh, however, apparently there's rumoured to be a release date of June 30th. I think it popped up on the Steam release date page for Armour 3 briefly. So you can uh, put that in your diaries. 30th of June is a Thursday. And uh, we should be looking at Armour 3 Apex on that date. Explore the rainforests, shanty towns, volcano, sugarcane factory, industrial port, and other impressive locations. Encounter hundreds of original structures, landmarks, decorations, natural objects, signs, and more. Experience a broad spectrum of gameplay opportunities, such as jungle warfare, amphibious assaults, and close quarters battle. Operators equipped with modern weaponry, thermal masking camouflage, and new night vision goggles and other unique gear. There's going to be a new controller preset, uh, which you can update to a new Armour 3 preset or stick to the setup uh, that you're used to with the Armour 3 Legacy preset. Um, so we're going to have a change up of controls, which is interesting to see. Uh, myself, I've changed a lot of the controls. I do have a custom sort of layout, so it's un I may save my uh, control layout as a separate file, switch over to the new Armour 3 preset, test it out, see what it's like, uh, and maybe make changes from there. It's interesting to see what they've changed uh, to which controls. Very interesting. So, moving on to factions, we have the Gendarmerie faction, uh, which is a local to know a law enforcement agency. We have the Syndicate faction a criminal organization composed of armed thugs and ex paramilitaries uh, csat special forces which operators equipped with modern weaponry thermal masking camouflage new night vision goggles and other unique gear we have csat pacific forces suitable camouflage assets for the primary armed forces there's also references in there to nato viper and ctrg so we may be looking at a few more factions within the game uh, and most of these do actually have sets of armor involved as well which we'll get into later on also so let's take a look at uh, what most people are going to be interested in and that's the weapons that are going to come with this update so we've got the aks 74u the akm and the ak-12 all coming in as the default uh, armor free weapons uh, no longer will we have to mod these in with certain uh, packs downloaded from the Steam Workshop and so on. They're actually going to be part of the base game. Uh, we're also getting the RPG-7 launcher, which is nice. Getting a brand new rocket launcher to come in there. Uh, along with the PM 9mm pistol. So we're getting a Russian semi-automatic pistol uh, in the update also. We're getting a SPA-16. Uh, standard issue assault rifle of CTRG units in the Pacific. We also have the Spark 16S, which has a thicker barrel and drug magazine and works as a light support weapon. Uh, we have the Spark 17 assault rifle. Uh, designated marksman rifle uh, is in many ways similar to the Spark 16. The main difference is the chambering to 7.62. Uh, the LIM 85 or LIM 85 is light machine gun. We're also getting another one of those. The Type 115 uh, 6.5mm or a 50 cal assault rifle version. That's interesting. Uh, we're getting a Protector 9mm submachine gun, a CMR 76 6.5 designated marksman rifle, a Car 95 5.8 uh, ballpup style assault rifle used by the CSAT Pacific Forces. And um, we're also getting a brand new optic as well, which is the ERCO optic, uh, which is an enhanced rifle combat optics, two times magnification, 
The Open Reflex ERCO sight is the ideal sighting solution for rifles and carbines and is designed with standard rail mounts in mind. Features a medium range optics and a close range collimator to achieve maximal effectivity in combat as an operator. Recommend for all CTRG and NATO forces. And we are also getting a brand new camo under the name of Tropic, uh, which will be nice to see how that's going to come off. Uh, so for the weapons and the extra optic and camo we're getting, that's rounded up there for you guys. And uh, let's move on to the vehicles, shall we? So first off, we have the KH-3A Feng Huang drone. The Feng Huang is an unmanned aerial drone based on a Chinese design. The UAV adopts the unusual canard layout and is propelled by a pusher engine. This multi-purpose drone is equipped with modern tracking and tracing systems, countermeasures, and also carries four air-to-ground laser-guided missiles. So we are getting a new drone in the update. There's a few ones uh, already in the game, which aren't really utilized in some game modes, uh, especially Exile, they've kind of been removed from Exile as a kind of OP. So uh, it's unlikely we're gonna be seeing this in Exile, but we'll definitely be seeing it in the base armor free game. Next up, we have a water scooter. I don't know if that's the actual name for it, but this is what I found within the files. Uh, it's a personal watercraft PWC of the sit down type this small hold craft driven by a jet propulsion system offers seats for three people and is easy to mount or dismount on the water thanks to the open stern construction. The powerful engine and great maneuverability makes this craft truly fun to ride. And of course, it is a small and useful water transport vehicle for military use as well. So we're getting another what looks to be not a jet ski, but maybe a version up for a jet ski so you can fit three people on it. Uh, it's a personal watercraft, so I'm interested to see what that looks like. I don't think we, we, I don't think we've seen any images or anything regarding that before. Uh, if we have, let me know. I don't think I've seen it, but uh, let me know in the comments. Um, we're also getting the MQ-12 Falcon drone, so we're getting another drone. Uh, this Autumnus remotely controlled helicopter drone is mainly used as close air support, and thanks to the unmanned construction, can be deployed in the most dangerous zones. The Falcon is equipped with a laser designator and can therefore handle surveillance, reconnaissance and target designation tasks. Its greatest strength, however, lies in armament. It carries two rocket pods, each with 12 unguided rockets, a six scalpel air-to-ground missiles. The MQ-12 Falcon can also use countermeasures for self-defense. So that definitely sounds OP as hell. Interested to see that also. Now these next two we've got, uh, are two variants of the VTOL which have been added into the game which if I'm led to believe you could also now carry vehicles within the VTOL um, so that's vehicle in vehicle transport is an actual thing now so the first of which is the V44X Blackfish VTOL developed as a 21st century replacement for aging C-130 based gunships and transport aircraft its third generation tilt rotor VTOL technology allows its long endurance aircraft to conveniently, conveniently utilize a wide range of airfields and runways, which greatly improves the military logistics. It also provides unparalleled maneuverability in its heavily armed gunship variant, which has a unique ability to perform either pylon turns or merely hover in place during the ground attack. The huge internal storage allows for transportation of vehicles up to the size and weight of the AMV-7 Marshall APC in the vehicle transport variant or up to 32 fully armed soldiers with supplies in the infantry support variant. The storage space of the gunship is a variant fully occupied uh, by automated weapon stations and carried ammunition. So the secondary VTOL we are getting is the Y-32 Xi'an VTOL by far the largest CSAT joint development project to date was long troubled by the conflicting requirements of the participating armies who demanded an aircraft with VTOL capabilities. The planned budget was vastly exceeded several times and development was years behind schedule. The program eventually became one of the most expensive in military procurement history and despite a great deal of information remains classified and is often compared to the older F-35 program. The final solution was based upon the most promising prototype designed 
in Zhejiang, which was able to meet most of the requirements with satisfactory results. High running and maintenance costs re remains a huge issue that plagues the reputation of the otherwise extremely progressive aircraft with many unique features and top notch bleeding edge technologies. So we are also getting a brand new off-road car. The MB four-wheel drive off-road car is a modern four-wheel drive off-road vehicle with a distinctive construction which could be tracked up to World War II. The vehicle was produced in the US and exists in a number of different editions. Thanks to the powerful engine, durable chassis and great maneuverability, this vehicle can handle all levels of difficult terrain from dry deserts to humid jungles or arctic wastelands. So that should be uh, the go-to vehicle. I'd imagine quite the, a large amount of terrain in snow is going to be a bit dodgy to go across in normal vehicles. Uh, so I imagine we're going to see a lot of these. Next up we have the Quillen LSV, an agile light protected vehicle for five to six soldiers depending on the configuration. The Quillen offers safe and fast operating speeds with superior levels of mobility and maneuverability. It is highly adaptable to severe, rugged and restrictive terrains while providing off-road cross-country mobility under all types of weather conditions. The vehicle was produced in China with Russian cooperation, so some minor influence from the Ifrit MRAP can be seen in the Quillen's design. Uh, the Quillen is a high customizable platform which can be fitted according to the mission. CSAT Pacific Forces primarily use the unarmed variant and the armed variant fitted with a 6.5mm minigun. Uh, so again, we're going to see something that looks a little bit like the Ifrit, uh, unarmed and armed versions. Uh, which is also nice to see and another vehicle added to the list. We have the aeroplane that everybody's seen in, in the screenshots for Tanoa. It's a Caesar BTT uh, propeller aeroplane. The Caesar BTT is one of the fastest fixed gear single engine piston aircraft reaching a speed of 235 knots, true airspeed at 25,000 feet. It is used by civilians and smaller shipping companies all around the world. Next up we have another LSV uh, which is the, the Prowler. The Prowler is a light strike vehicle which means it is agile and lightly armoured. It uses speed, maneuverability and off-road mobility to avoid major threats. Another benefit is that the Prowler is light enough to be transported by medium helicopters such as the UH-80 Ghost Hawk. This is in contrast to the heavy MRAP vehicles which are harder to transport to the battlefield. Two configurations of the Prowler exist. The top turret is equipped with a 50 cal heavy machine gun. With this arsenal, Prowler is ideal for quick hit and run missions. The unarmed variant is stripped of all guns, but the back part of the vehicle is open and there are reserve seats for two additional soldiers. Last up, we have the rib boat. The rigid hold inflatable boat is a lightweight, but high performance and high capacity boat constructed with a solid shaped hull and flexible tubes at the gunwale. The boat can fit seven passengers and a driver. Rib can be used for multiple tasks. It can be a simple transport boat with some countries deploying them for coast guarding. This is in contrast to criminals on Tanoa who uses ribs as a fast and small smuggling boat. So we are going to see the rib boat back in action on Armour 3. Uh, it's one of the main boats using Armour 2. And uh, again, it's a very nice to see all of these new vehicles added. It is actually very surprising the amount of stuff that they are adding in. 10 brand new vehicles along with those 13 new weapons. Definitely an exciting time for Armour 3. So if that hasn't whetted your taste buds a little bit there, um, they've actually got and added in some new equipment and uniforms to the game. So starting off, we've got the Viper helmet, the next generation combined helmet developed in China for special military operatives. Shields physical heat and renders a soldier invisible to thermal imaging if used with compatible uniform. This helmet combines a protective function with the functionality other soldiers seek via the additional equipment such as night vision. The Viper Uniform, next generation uniform developed in China to give the operator an edge in combat thanks to its shielding of body heat. If combined with a compatible helmet, the soldier becomes virtually undetectable for thermal imaging technology. Uh, that's kind of crazy, get a brand new uniform, thermal is no longer OP with this setup. However, features basic protection as opposed to usual uniforms, but loses some capacity as a result. So it's going to be one of those uniforms where you're not going to be able to carry quite as much stuff as others. 
but it does have a very unique feature in terms of not being able to be detected by thermal, which is very nice. We also have the CTRG Tropic Helmet, which new generation protective headgear designed originally for the US Army and by an external company. It is a modular helmet system designed to give soldier an edge in combat making him stealthy for thermal imaging technology when combined with the TI shielding uniform, mainly used by special forces. So we're also going to have the uh, shielding uniform for the CTRG also. So that seems to be a main feature of Tanara as well, is uh, thermal imaging shielding. Um, we also have the paramilitary clothes, a combination of clothes and fatigues used by local organized thugs on Tanoa and the surrounding islands. They usually have at least part of the military fatigues and add a green and brown colors to be usable also as a camouflage if they need to fight. We are also getting a brand new ghillie suit. So I'm sure most of you are very happy about that. We're getting the NATO ghillie suit, ghillie suit variant for tropical environment used by NATO forces. And we're also getting a CSAT ghillie, a ghillie suit variant for tropical environment used by CSAT forces. Um, we're getting the NATO clothes, thermal imaging shielding uniform developed for the US Army by an external company. Again, the soldier is virtually invisible for TI technology. CSAT clothes, a tropical camouflage pattern uniform used by CSAT forces, features a warm green and beige colors to fit in the jungle environment. We have the Tanoa common clothes, sporting clothes, commonly worn on Tanoa and the surrounding islands, comfortable yet durable clothes, usually used for sports. And the uh, one of the most interesting ones is the bandit skull clothes. So we've got a combination of clothes used by local criminals on Tanoa and the surrounding islands. They usually use functional civilian clothes due to low resources and or connections to obtain better equipment. So that's interesting. There's a whole section of bandit skull clothes. Maybe we'll see some uh, Tanoa bandits on the island. That's going to be interesting as well. If you're interested, I've also managed to uncover, I'm pretty sure, a large amount, if not all of the locations on Tanoa, the different islands and map locations that you can go to, which I'll run across the screen right now. Uh, there's a pretty big list, so I'm not going to go through them all, but you can read them on the screen and uh, maybe pause it and go through them if you want to. Uh, some pretty uh, interesting places there, a few airfields, um, obviously quite a few islands around the edge of the main island. Um, and yeah, should be fun to go around and check all these places out once we've got access to the map. Okay, so the things that we already know about and little tweaks uh, that they've made to the game. We have the visual update, the weapon switching, vehicle and vehicle transport as I mentioned earlier on. We've got new targeting, uh, stamina, squad communication, spectator mode, different uh, changes to the revive and respawn uh, screens in game. We've got the limping. Uh, updates to the launcher. We now have groups also within Armour 3, uh, Armour and Hit Detection, Controls and Audio. So guys, that's my quick overview of the details released so far for Apex. As soon as the map is available to check out, I will be doing so and bringing you some footage of that. Also, I will be going into more details on the weapons, vehicles and equipment once that's also available to us. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, remember to put a like on it if you enjoyed it. And um, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And I will see you very soon for more details on Apex. Get the fuck hyped!